Lily takes a deep breath of the fresh afternoon air, moistened by Black Lake's many fountains and cooled by a northern breeze. No bodies burning on pyres, no refuse sweltering in the sun, and no stinking refugees from the beggar's nest either. Lily surveys the impressive estates and well-dressed nobles, wondering if one might be Chandra's home or parent. Though she must not have been from too prominent a family as she wasn't listed on the Black Lake map Lily studied back at the mask. As Lily and company approach the board laid bare, they can smell the provender. Fresh fish simmering in a most delicious cream, roast boar, fried potatoes in one sauce and fried onions in another. Had she has bones, he would have told her what kinds, too. Mustard and tomato, locally grown if he had to guess. Otherwise, outside is a curious sign, Osrix with tentacles. But he's never heard of this thing called Space Rock from somewhere across the multiverse. Right, the board laid bare tavern. Although the smells were promising outside, inside is quite a disappointment. It's just like any other tavern. The reek of ale, dimly lit, low beam ceilings, rough furniture, and a rather disappointingly plain looking barmaid. What can I get you? The bartender will take your order. I'm busy. Lily was rather hoping it would be a wine house or a private club with a few tables, quiet enough for conversation to drink and maybe a few bites of some delicacy. Not a noisy alehouse where she has to shout to get the bartender's attention. Oi, what can I get ya? Now here's the bartender for the board laid bare. Greetings! Got a particular need this fine day. I was curious. I think interesting is happening in the tavern, of course. I think Shorwood mentioned distractions in the undersellers. Nothing that needs to be said out in the open. Nope, nothing at all. Of course, there's no harm in telling Lily. Look, if you really want in on what happens here, you'll have to get a pass from a mercenary in the trade of blades. Then we'll talk. A mercenary? All right. Probably referring to the dwarf Grax, who was one of the only mercenaries there that wasn't necessarily looking for an employer. All right, asking to see what he has for sale. They would likely be disguised and could be anywhere. Even here at what must be the noisiest tavern in the Jewel of the North, despite the current reprieve as Lily sure the musicians are simply refilling their tankards. While browsing the tavern's wares, Lily tries to imagine what does happen here that would require a pass. If it's a worthy distraction for the nobility, then she wouldn't be opposed to being distracted herself. But what could it be? She hopes it would be something rather exciting, like a wolf fight. A bit of blood sport is always thrilling to watch. Lily asks the bartender if he's heard of the board laid bare and as Bravin. He's never even heard of the town. She begins to explain how it's off the old dune trail, but he's not heard of that either. Utterly hopeless. She guesses the tavern master as Bravin is as blissfully unaware as him, and wouldn't be surprised if it turns out they're long-lost brothers, separated at birth and separated by ignorance. The board laid bare indeed. So was the service, the hospitality, and probably the accommodations. He claims he has only one room left and hasn't been quite fixed up yet, as he put it. Lily lacks not for intelligence. It's the storage room. But at one silver piece, it'll do. It's private, and at least her and Little Red won't have to suffer the drunks that will undoubtedly take the floor in the common room. Lily's lips pull tight into a tiny evil grin as she puts an eager ear to the door. Sorry. Listening for wolf howls, or even better, wolf yelps. But she doesn't even hear a whimper. In a corner, sitting by himself as a militia guard wearing the regalia of a captain, Lily hastens to get a current report before the musicians start up again. What do you want? All right, here's Theron, member of the militia. Greetings, citizen. I think Lily might have some questions. Certainly, though, I have plenty of problems to deal with today and very little time to chat. What do you wish to know? <laughs> she 
probably like his name and rank. I'm Thurin, Captain of the Guard here in Black Lake, good woman. Asking who Lily is. Well, he's a member of the militia. I guess she'll <laughs> at least divulge that. And be somewhat polite. If only I were not beset by problems. What can I do for you? All right, asking what problems he's referring to. Well, beyond trying to keep the plague out of the district, one of my men seems to have disappeared without a trace. I suppose that in itself wouldn't be so odd considering the times, but I know this man too well. He's an old friend of mine named Samuel. He wouldn't just leave. Where does he think he was gone? I know where he's not. He hasn't reported back to his barracks, and his family hasn't seen him. He also hasn't left Black Lake, not by the gates anyway. Some army men seem to think Samuel is drunk in some gutter somewhere. The old man drank, certainly, but he's never disappeared. It takes something more to do that. Uh, I should probably assuming that he sent men out to look for him. I don't have the manpower. Right now, it's all I can do to hold down the gates and keep Black Lake calm. I've told my men to keep on the lookout, but nothing so far. All right. Ask her if he's offering a reward. I'd gladly pay 300 gold pieces if someone found Samuel, and he was returned unharmed. That's all I can afford, however. That must be good friends indeed. Ask him where he was last seen. He was one of my inspectors, my best one, in fact. He may have been looking into something, but if he was, he never told anyone what he was doing. I don't think she'll actively search for Samuel, but she'll certainly keep an eye out for 300 gold. Would you? I suppose at this point I can't be too picky about whom I ask for help. You could look for Samuel, madam. It'd be quite a relief. If you do find him, tell him to return if he can, or at least I'd like to be certain of his fate. Yeah, I think she's going to ask for us at an advance. <laughs> uh, I suppose that would be expected. I shall simply have to hope that you live up to your word. Here you go then, and good luck in your search. So the Inspector General needs to inquire about a missing inspector. She wonders what he was inspecting and if it has to do with his disappearance. What if the Inspector General disappears as well? Will they send yet another inspector after her? Lily smiles to herself at the absurdity of it all. Maybe someone in Black Lake is collecting inspectors. Nonsense. It'll be an easy 300 gold. He's likely passed out drunk in a fountain after having inspected the tavern's not so bare selection of brew. Who is pleased to know that the moon is out tonight? It's a waxing gibbous moon, what they call an emotional moon. Unfortunately, reminding her of the events at the mask and the man in purple undergarments, or as she's begun to refer to the color, Tanith's Bane. I greet you. All right, here's a member of the Black Lake Patrol. <laughs> Who might you be, madam? I don't recognize you. You are aware the district is off limits to all but residents of the city guard. Yeah. He best watch his tone. Uh, er, yes, my lady. I think I recognize you now. You're one of them working for Arabeth del Tilmerand, aren't you? My apologies, my lady. Can't be too careful with folks getting desperate and all. I'll tell the other patrolmen about you to be sure. Yeah, she actually has some questions. Ask him for any new developments regarding the plague. Patrolling here on Black Lake has its advantages after all. Ask him if he's heard of anything about creatures on the loose. <laughs> I heard something about some beasts loose in the city, but... I haven't, been, I haven't seen anything like that here in Black Leg, that's for certain. Could try up in the zoo. Maybe something's hiding there, I don't know. <laughs> Alright, 
asking for any recent strange events. Nothing to do with the plague, no. We haven't been getting much news here since we closed the district off. There's been a couple of incidents, but we've quarantined them right away. But no, no outbreaks, thankfully. No idea how long that'll last, though. All right, asking anything interesting going on in Black Lake. Regarding her investigation. Yeah, anything odd. Well, there is the business with Meldon and his visitor, but I'm not supposed to talk about that. Of course, it won't do any harm to tell Lily. I suppose you're right. Meldon's had this strange woman visiting him the past few days. He's been real secretive about her. Some of the fellows thinks he's holding her there. He's just the type. At any rate, his estate is up to the northwest if you want to go there. I wouldn't. <laughs> That's certainly interesting. Maybe you want to talk to Captain Thurin. One of the older guards has been missing for a while. Probably fell into the gutter. Of course, uh, we heard about Samuel. All right. Very well, my lady. Meldonin, holding women against their will. Lily will have to reconsider her initial inclination to defend the noble wizard's stockpiling of true. The Neverwinter River, flowing through the city, still warm from Mount Hot now, and falling here in Black Lake, glinting in the moonlight. Lily can't resist. She removes her shoes to tread in its warm waters. She's remembering Honora, and how they do the same. Just outside Candlekeep, on the north side of the Way of the Lion, there's a secluded wood in a valley. Bristle wood. One can reach it by a footpath that runs parallel to the road to Barragost, in about the time it takes one to braid one's hair. Lily would know. A ways in, in the center of the wood is a clearing. No trees grow there because the very rock has pushed through to the surface, leaving fractured boulders strewn everywhere, forming a kind of stone mound. At its top, from a fissure, comes a spring, which cascades over the rock, pooling into the clearing below, and eventually, by a stream, finds its way and empties into the Sea of Swords to the west. Some stone remains above the water, creating natural places to sit or lie on, while others are buried waist-deep, perfect for bathing, washing one's hair, or relaxing in the naturally warm water. Nature's design is almost perfect, with what appears to be a flagstone walkway over the pool from the edge of the clearing, past a myriad of swimming holes, to the bottom of the falls in the center where a prominent boulder rests, like an altar, as if it were some temple of nature, the falls its focal point. Lily and Honora named it Tuolu, or Moonwell. They spent many a summer night under the moonlight at that almost sacred place, with bare feet nestled in the well's warm waters, sometimes talking, but more often than not, just enjoying the sound of the falls, exchanging looks, sometimes fleeting, sometimes long, but always followed by a smile. Lily misses those nights at Tuolu, maybe even more than Duramore. An estate, well-to-do enough to have a guard dog, but not one that was on the map. It could be Chandra's. His nose may be wet and disgusting, 
but at least it's plague-free.